going to talk a little bit about rod bearing clearances. Yesterday I had to take them all out from their journals that I had already put Loctite on them because I wanted to measure everything properly. I tried using plastic gauge. A lot of people recommend it. Even the book recommends using plastic gauge. It didn't work for me. They, the rods move around a lot. I don't think it's accurate. So I got a micrometer to measure the outside diameter of each journal. I wrote the number on each one of them just to remember and took the measurements on a piece of paper. They're all barely under 55, which is the standard. I assume CB Performance does it on purpose to um, give you some clearance. I don't think it's supposed to be 55.0, um, but I have no idea. I only care if the journals are within spec, if the difference between the journal and the bearing falls within the range. So then I went to my friend's house because he has a vise and I put each rod, these are the rods by weight, I have them labeled by weight so that's the way I can remember which is which and I measured them compared to the micrometer on 55 millimeters and I measured how far over each one of them was, over 55. And my measurements were not perfect, I could get it within a range. I'm sure other people with more experience can get this way more accurate. So this is uh, 55 millimeters plus two three thousandths of an inch, gives you this and this. And then I selected which rod journal I wanted to assign it to because two of my journals were a little bigger and two of them were a little smaller. You can see number one is uh, 2.1649 and so is number two. And then number three and number four are a very, very little bit smaller. And then the same thing happened with the bearings or, or with the rods. This one was two to three over this one was two to three over, and these two were two to two and a half over. So I consider these to be the smaller ones with number three and number four, and these two are bigger. I will assign them to number two and number one, and I don't need to check the math for all of them. I did one of the small ones, one of the big ones, and my clearance, the, the difference between the bearing and the journal in inches, I divided by two because it's a circle, so you want the clearance on either side. And divided by two, all of them are perfectly in the range that I got from the book, which is right here. And I wish I could have done all this in millimeters. That's how it started here, converting to millimeters. But then every tool you buy here is in inches, unless you want to pay a lot more. I got this. Um, Fowler bore gauge. It was $104. I could have bought the Chinese one. I'm sure it's Chinese anyway, but I could have bought a, an off-brand one for half. I decided to pay a little bit more because around here in this country, $104 doesn't even pay for a tow truck. So one less reason to worry about in this rebuild. If I didn't want to pay for this, I would have at least used a set of these. I bought these anyway to use for the lifter bores that I'm going to check next. And then obviously the micrometer. Um, I don't think you can get away without a micrometer unless you know how to use plastic gauge. But I would, I don't recommend from my experience, which was very limited, I don't like plastic gauge, it's it's very difficult and maybe if I had a vise or some kind of fixture where I could have the crank laying on the side like people do falling off the edge of the bench, it would be easier. But with this setup and the space I have, plastic gauge doesn't work so I spent some money on the tools and I'm really happy to know 
that everything is within spec. So now I'm ready to put the rods back on the on the journals where they belong, and and I basically I don't I wouldn't say wasted, but I spent a whole day undoing this in the morning and then measuring everything in the afternoon. Now I have to put it back, but it's better to do it right now than to um, do it. <laughs> do a rebuild all over again or do this on the side of the road, which I don't think I could do, so uh, hopefully this will give me a bit more reliability. Okay, my brand new Chinese snap gauge snapped too far as soon as I opened it. Uh, the spring that goes in there went flying. Could have fallen between the bench and and the wall so it's gone forever don't buy Chinese I finally put everything back the rod clearance is now checked the six main nuts are in and torqued in this can still spin it's not binding which is great I figured out a way to mount this magnetic stand that was falling over using a clamp and the dial indicator is at the camshaft at around 20. It's a little bit of a strange way to mount it but I couldn't figure out a better one. If you have a better method let me know. Now I will push on this side and check how far up from 20 it goes. Check that maybe I'll make it a little more parallel so I get a, a more accurate measurement, but that's as close as I could get for now.